Well, Kenyan developers came up with more localized solutions, one of them being Maramoja Taxi. Here are the interesting insights KTN's Brian George Tenno found talking to Maramoja Taxi CEO Ronald Mahondo on The Innovator. location it, it gives you drivers automatically mm. uh, but in case you want to make a request for someone having been in the industry for a record six years Maramoja taxi hailing up saw a huge opportunity to provide more market segmented solutions in pricing availability and convenience CEO Ronald Mahondo shared that just as the name Maramoja means right away in Swahili, their strategy was to get clients transport services in their locality. One of our co-founders is called Jason. Uh, so uh, he actually brought the idea to this country even before most of these other apps came. Um, but and then the idea was developed locally. So the main difference we have from other applications is all our, most of our dev is, is local. Yeah, so it's a local team. Uh, we've tried to solve the problems from an African perspective. So where we say that the issue, the biggest problem that people have is not can I get a taxi? Because even right now, if you move down, uh, down the lift, uh, you'll actually find taxis outside here. But the key question is, can I find a taxi I can trust? And with an ever-growing transport business, Maramoja leveraged on the existing challenges in the public transport sector to differentiate. We solve three problems. The first problem we solve is we know people want to get a taxi nearby when they want to go. So we try to ensure that everywhere where you are, uh, within the cities which you are alive, uh, you'll always get a taxi nearby. Uh, second, we know people want to deal with people they can trust. So in our app, uh, trust is, is key, and user choice is key. So uh, what we do is we enable users to be able to choose the people that they actually want to ride on. And then the third problem we solve is we say that people want the luxury of a private driver at a cost of a taxi. Ronald intimates that the market has been manageable, though dotted with a couple of challenges and with a stiff competition. How exactly do they fare? Uh, as a brand, we, we made a couple of um, specific strategic decisions quite early on, uh, where we said our focus early on will be on corporate. So uh, for the last uh, five or six years or so, uh, we've been uh, focusing on corporate. Uh, currently, we serve over 100 corporates uh, from big ones that uh, big brands that people are aware of, like KCB, Equity Bank, to small brands that you may not be aware of, to small restaurants like uh, Bow Box, where we carry their staff uh, going home uh, in the evening. And uh, for the bigger brands, basically, we, we help them in an enterprise way where we help them to manage their business, yeah, from a mobility uh, point of view. Just like other industries, the pandemic never spared the taxi hailing sector. Everyone had to innovate or be phased out by the harsh economic environment. Yeah, so uh, COVID, for us, just like being a, like in the mobility sector, Definitely it affected us because of the lockdowns, uh, people are not moving around, people are afraid. So definitely, so definitely the reduced uh, travel or commute within the city has really affected us. Uh, but we also understand because we are in an ex extraordinary time. And the extraordinary time is that we are, we are facing a big, mo a big monster that the world has never seen uh, in a very long time. I think the last time that we were put at a point where we really had to think outside the box. So a couple of new products actually came out because of this, this pandemic. And those products are the ones which have enabled us to be able to actually ride through it. Currently, Kenya leads the taxi hailing service business in East Africa. Although Tanzania's public transport management system stands taller, there is an opportunity to restore Kenya's glory if the following could be done. Kenya is one of the biggest markets for our sector in Africa and I think it doesn't come 
just like that. So we can't take it for granted. I think the government has, has given us an, an environment that we've been able to, to grow. Uh, what I'd like to talk uh, about is the future and the opportunities which we, we see. Because I think as much as if you compare uh, uh, regionally, Kenya is doing well. But I think if you look at it from a, glo a global stage, eh, there's still a lot that uh, needs to be done. Yeah. And I think uh, the government needs to, someone needs to get the idea that it's a good thing to attract investment. It's a good thing to create an environment that uh, will enable people with ideas to pursue them and attract investment uh, from people who are interested in, 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 in investing in it. Finally, if you thought this would be the last of taxi hailing service application and innovation, Ronald has a word for you. If you look at the percentage that of people who actually use apps to the other means of transport, less than uh, two or three percent use cabs. Because if you look at, at Nairobi, for instance, we have around four million.